Hello everyone, welcome to the video. My name is Goslix. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that Sandwick was talking about on his Twitch stream. I'm going to shout out Sandwick. Check him out, link down below. Uh, basically, it's about esports orgs in Brawlhalla esports. So there's a big problem. Uh, if you've been a fan of Brawlhalla for a long time, you'll know there's been a bunch of esports orgs that have come to the scene and left throughout the years. I don't think there's any teams that are around when I first started playing. And there's a reason behind that. So today in this video, I want to talk about why do esports teams fail in Brawlhalla? Uh, what are the problems and how could they not fail? So if you run an esports team, if you're at least interested in this problem in general, I really recommend keep watching. I I have more experience and I'd say a lot of other people are talking about this topic just because I've been on like 10 plus Brahalla esports orgs. I think I've been on the most esports orgs of like almost any Brahalla player probably ever. Um, sure, I'm, I'm a whore with that kind of stuff, but um, I just wanted to get to the lands and I did whatever I could to get to them. So yeah, uh, respect it, hate it, I don't really care. Uh, let's talk about it. So uh, if you don't know, there's a bunch of top teams that have actually been in the Brahalla esports team. Wildcard Gaming had Sandstorm and Wrenched back in 2019. Then there's been Tempo Storm with Sandstorm and Boomy. Uh, Space Station as well. I think Wildcard is 2018, my bad. Space Station had Noel, which turned into Ghost Gaming. Big, big orgs. Like these orgs, you see that gold check mark? Do you know how much that gold check mark costs? Yeah, look at this. $1,000 per month just to get a freaking gold check mark on Twitter. So these orgs are spending that kind of money. Is that custom? What the? That's a cuss. I've, I've never seen that before. Holy crap. Um, so yeah, and then, yeah, then there's ghost gaming here. The point that I'm trying to make is like, some of these orgs have a lot of money. There's also Lazarus, Obey Alliance. Obey doesn't have as much money, but yeah. So there's been big orgs in Brawlhalla. So why don't they stay in Brawlhalla? So I want to talk about, okay, here are the problems. The number one problem is that it's not directly profitable. Uh, orgs don't know how to profit off players. You'll see esports orgs come and go all the time throughout the years if you've been around esports in general. It is not profitable. It theoretically can be, but no org has really done it at a large scale, maybe on a small scale. So I, I'm actually going to talk about how to profit on a small scale because a lot of orgs genuinely don't know and don't have the skills to do it. Um, so it's directly not profitable. Also just the orgs in general don't have the knowledge on how to profit from players. Players can be extremely profitable. There's people that do this for a living today. And this is a new scene the, our audience is people like below 30. What happens when we're 50 and 60 and the whole world is going to be interested in esports? What about the countries that don't have internet and those kids who will be interested in esports? This is a growing industry. It's brand new. It's like I, when I'm comparing it with like parents and whatnot, it's like when the guitar first came out, nobody wanted to play guitar, but the people that did are like, wow, this is so cool. Maybe they make some music. People are like, wow, this is really cool. But the young people adopt it first and then the world adopts it. So one day... And every year, I think esports is going to get bigger because the audience has so much room to grow still. Uh, anyways, so I, I think we're just at a point where people aren't skilled enough and don't have the knowledge and understanding to do and make the right decisions, uh, especially at a very top level. It's very difficult. This is still very new. And on a smaller scale, it's getting better. But a lot of people on a smaller scale are new to it. So they don't have the skills or the knowledge. So let's kind of talk about that. Um, also, um, the money coming in, because it's not profitable, uh, the money running it, it can be really sketch. It's not a proven business model. So a lot of orgs that exist today, they're being funded by money that you don't know exactly where that money came from. Uh, there's creators who got sued for the FTX situation. If you're getting money from a source that's illegal and you're promoting that source, a team is no different than a sponsor. It's, uh, it can be sketch and scary. So you got to be careful for sure. Um, and then just in general, uh, your operation costs can be more than player profitability. If you're doing brand deals, if you're doing graphics and making montages and doing all this stuff that theoretically is like what esports teams should do, that operation cost is almost always going to be more than player profitability. So uh, the big problem is player profitability and how to make money in general from esports. So let's talk about the first one. Tourney winnings percentage. This is bad. Do not rely on profiting from players competing. 
players do not make a living competing as of right now unless the game is massive like dota or like maybe top valorant franchising and whatnot in league of legends but in general esports is you're not going to make any money from these tourney winnings and the teams that are franchising and doing all this they're not making a profit because their operation cost is way too high um, so do not rely on tourney winnings. Ignore it. But this is a lot. Sometimes they're like, oh, we'll take 20% of your winnings. That's not going to do anything at the end of the day. You might get lucky. Like the team that sponsored me for DreamHack Austin got lucky. Got a, a grand or so out of it, which is smart. They, they just picked and got lucky. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, you do not rely on this. Next, merchandise and products. Uh, this can be very useful and very profitable if done right. We're seeing people and creators do it for the first time ever within the last couple of years. If it's Mr. Beast with his feastables, if it's Logan Paul and KSI with Prime, uh, creator products. And at the end of the day, esports players, like even sports athletes, they're creators in a way. They're creating gameplay that's entertaining. They're making, they're doing something that others find entertaining. Um, so at the end of the day, like merchandise products, like people want to buy merch from their favorite players and creators, or not just merchandise in terms of clothing, but actual products that can help your day-to-day -day life. Like for example, if Sandstorm made a custom keyboard, I would probably buy it. Any Brahalla player that looks up to Sandstorm would probably buy it if it's affordable. I think that's a genius idea. So like genius products that really relate to the person that's uh, helping with them, like like Mr. Beast chocolate and burgers or whatever, but like the prime hydration. It's the same idea, just products that's consumable that your audience genuinely wants. I made wireless chargers. My audience does not want wireless chargers, but I learned that the hard way and that happens. Um, Another way to profit, team sponsorships. So again, this is content, this is media. If you're reaching a million people per month, let's say 500K on Twitter, which I'm already at, like, I've got like 40 something K and I get like 500,000 impressions on Twitter. If you're able to like package this up in a big deal and whatnot to a big sponsor, like you could be making like 50, 100K pretty easily. Uh, not easily, but with one deal, you get what I'm saying. Uh, teams can genuinely make a good amount of money from sponsorships, but uh, the problem is to make a good money amount of money from sponsorships, you need to understand the business of social media and be almost like a creator so you can get those views on a very affordable scale. Uh, you got to keep costs as low as possible. And a lot of current modern esports teams don't understand like on social media how to promote a team and get those impressions and views without paying someone a really large amount of money because it takes a lot of specific skills that's why you'll see like moist esports and whatnot do pretty well because they're literally run by content creators um it, it's obviously still a money hole for them but it's a huge marketing thing to market their content which then they can profit off as well um which is another point i'll be going at later but the point i'm trying to make is and it's no different than elon musk cutting 90 percent of staff on twitter you got to be able to deliver on how you get money as cheap as possible. So if you're getting sponsorships, then you need to get those views and impressions on as little operation cost as possible. And a lot of people don't have the skills to be able to do that. It's very difficult. Um, and then also you could be an agency for the players. So bringing sponsors to the players, being the middleman, taking a percentage. If they're big enough players, then you definitely can. The problem is there's so much like loose investment with esports, just like whales and just really rich people just like throwing money at it. And that getting the players to get big enough deals, they're just gonna go to another team that's like throwing money away, burning money, giving to these players, honestly. Uh, so a team that's burning money and you trying to compete with them can be very difficult. It could take a lot of negotiating with the right players to be able to find the right fit and people that genuinely believe in your business. It's very difficult to get the players where you can profit as being the agency. I think Tempo did this to a degree, but I'm not so familiar. I, I didn't sign any NDAs, I've just kind of heard. But uh, I'm sure a lot of teams do this, but it's not a clear way to profit a great amount. Um, and then YouTube slash content. So YouTube pays extremely well. You'll see teams like Sentinels make a lot of money as well. But being able to get the views on YouTube on a low operation cost and then being able to profit from that kind of stuff and then building the sponsors that way, um, it, it, just keeping operation costs as low as possible is really the problem. And a lot of teams don't have the skills to do that. The people who are in charge of the teams just want to run teams. They don't know how to be social media influencers. And they'd rather be influencers for themselves than a team most of the time. It's still very new. So those are kind of the, the current ways to profit. 
it, it can be extremely difficult. I think what we're going to see is a bunch of esports teams run as as low operation cost as possible. And it's going to be our generation, the Gen Z and after, who we grew up with social media, with TikTok and whatnot. We know how to reach a large amount of people without like spending a lot of money in the production costs because we understand entertainment more than previous generations because we've had more access to the tools to understand it. So do I think esports teams long term are going to find success? Yes, I think they're going to be profitable as well one day. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be finding the right people who want to start esports teams that have the skills to be able to profit with very little operation costs. And that's the challenge. I believe one day I might be able to do that. Do I want to do that right now? Heck no, no chance. Too much work. I'd rather focus on my own brand right now. Maybe Neutralix can turn into something one day and we could do something. Who who knows? Never say never. But uh, that's the biggest problem with esports teams where you'll see all these teams, they'll pick up players, you'll, they'll throw money at them with salaries and then none of them know how to profit an amount or have the operation costs as low as possible to profit to offset that salary that they're giving players. And those salaries are so crazy because they're not profitable. People, again, they're just throwing money away. And that's kind of the problem we have. Again, over time, I think the industry is going to solve this problem, but it is going to take a ton of effort. And it's no different than when sports first started happening for the first time ever. I imagine those teams, it took a long time to learn how to profit with people going to arenas and whatnot. Esports arenas haven't even been built yet. Leagues haven't been built yet that are for in-person leagues around the world. This is gonna take time. We're at the start of an insanely crazy journey. And Brahalla, I see it like a sport. It's never going anywhere. They're gonna update that game forever or replace it and continue to update it. Brahalla 2. Um, just same with CSGO 2. Like CSGO is gonna be around for the rest of our lives. Uh, some variation of the free to play game. It's such a smart business model. It's not crazy profitable right away, but it's going to last forever. They created something special. Brahalla created something special and we're gonna see some teams last, but it's going to take a lot of learning and it's difficult. So that's why teams currently haven't done it. Maybe some of the current teams will stay. I assume no over long period of time, but so someone's gonna figure it out. It theoretically makes sense. If you do all this and have the skills on knowing how to do this, someone's gonna do it. It's just a matter of time. Thanks for watching this video. If you watch until the end, uh, let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, I don't know what to comment. Comment Brawlhalla Esports. Because if you watch until the end and you heard this out, like, I don't know. Just let me know your thoughts. I'd love to start a conversation in the comments. This is such a crazy topic because Brawlhalla Esports in general is just so volatile sometimes. And I want to see teams successfully do it. And it makes sense theoretically. There's a lot of money to be made from YouTube content and other ways in this media space. But uh, current teams haven't been able to do it. So we'll see. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys all later. Take care. Peace.